Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, this is Shackleton, of course. It's been a little while um, since I've done a video, about a week. Normally, I don't want to leave it uh, much longer than that. And, you know, in this case, um, there's just too much to talk about going on in the world right now, both with climate change and with the coronavirus. Sometimes it's getting more difficult to decide what topics to talk about. But in this video, I'm just going to discuss uh, what's on my mind with the uh, coronavirus. Basically, logic 101 of coronavirus spreading. So, we don't know for sure where, where, whether it originated in wet markets. You know, we think it was bats, went to some sort of mammal or intermediary animal, and then spread to people. Perhaps in wet markets, you know, there's a bio lab in Wuhan, the, the center, the epicenter. Some people think that there was carelessness, you know, maybe a release or a leak from something that they, they had there. I mean, I guess we don't know for sure. Maybe we'll, we'll never know. I don't know. But, uh, you know, China is being blamed an awful lot now. Um, and the WHO, the World Health Organization, is being blamed and... You know, I'm not really sure. I mean, there's going to be lots of finger pointing. There's lots of time for blame. Um, but right now we're in the middle of the pandemic and we need global cooperation between countries. So blame is just counterproductive, right? It's too early for finger pointing and it's very, very counterproductive. You know, we need cooperation between countries now, not blame. So... You know, what actually happened in China, of course, they isolated many millions of people. You know, they shut down the massive city of Wuhan and then within a day or a few days shut down the whole region. You know, that involves some 70 million people. You know, the world was watching, you know, in sort of startling amazement, but was very disconnected that that it could come to, to their location. I mean, they were looking at China. This is a Chinese thing. You know, they, they built field hospitals in 10 days. They shut down everything. The streets were completely quiet. You could see trucks going down the street, spraying disinfectant, people wearing, wearing masks everywhere. You know, the army was mobilized. I mean, they, they, they treated it extremely serious. And of course, that was in January you know, to early February. And then in February, it, of course, spread to Italy, you know. And then, you know, people I talked to were saying, well, this is, you know, that's in Italy. It's in China. You know, they, people, there was denial on the part of people at all levels, at, at the public, at um, scientific organizations, at governments. And, you know, I was, I was kind of spreading the alarm you know, saying this is extremely serious. I don't see how we can stop this. And, you know, to say that this was sort of unexpected once we saw what was happening in China and saw what was happening in Italy, you know, it was pretty, sh pretty certain that it was going to spread to the rest of the world. So what did we do? What did countries do since January 23rd? Very, very little. You know, the scrambles for masks, the scrambles for ventilators, the scramble for tests, you know, all of those things, they didn't happen after January 23rd when China went into lockdown. They happened a month, two months later, okay? Um, you know, there's a lot that can be said about climate and how people respond to, to climate and how people respond to, you know, this virus and any emergency. There's a lot of people that are very lethargic and you really can't get them concerned about it until it comes to their neighborhood but logic says that we knew this we, logic says that the scale of this thing that this was going to spread around the world so the chinese um you know they closed on january 23rd um canada we closed stuff in um uh, mid-march so you know mid-march we wasted uh basically you know, that's seven weeks in Canada, for example, that, you know, we could have prepared, <clears throat> we could have got supplies, we could have greatly, you know, ramped up monitoring, we could have shut earlier, or could we have? 
you know, right now, you know, one of the biggest hard hit places is the is the uh, old folks home, the long term care facilities. Um, you know, it seems to be spreading like wildfire in these places. You know, the virus is always mutating, and there's some arguments that when it's in these places, not not people aren't just weaker and have underlying medical conditions and are old. You know, so more frail and fragile. But the virus, um, because it can so easily spread in a confined building, you know, amongst all these people, it can actually be even more uh, potent. But so, you know, I would just argue that, uh, you know, every country was woefully unprepared and they shouldn't have been. So therefore they were, you know, stupid. I mean, blame China, blame Trump, blame, you know, Trudeau, in my case, for letting a million people come in after March break from America, you know, from not telling them don't go. I mean, this virus is going to hit us hard, right? Um, you know, I mean, blame the World Health Organization. They said it wasn't intent, it wasn't internationally concerning, you know, on January 23rd, the same day that China shut down, etc. Anyway, let's talk about, you know, what's happening and, uh, you know, what we can expect in the future. So, you know, I call it Logic 101, Coronavirus Spreading. Okay, and that's the, probably the title of the video. I think of the titles afterwards. It'll be something like that. Point one, I'd like to make six key points. Okay, point one is, you know, and we didn't necessarily know all these things right away, but we know them all now. Okay, and I'll argue that we knew most of them so that, you know, after January 23rd, we knew most of them and the world could have reacted quite differently instead of being lethargic and slow and just saying, oh, it's not going to come here, it's not going to be too bad, we're prepared, whatever, you know, just wor empty words. Okay, so point one, so Logic 101, coronavirus spreading. Number one, the virus can be spread by people who never develop symptoms at all, right? And in fact, um, you know, it's going to be good, the results of Iceland's study, because they're trying to test every single person. And I should really point out at this stage that testing for the virus is one thing. We also need to test, do blood tests for antibodies to find out if people, what fraction of people had the virus and have recovered. You know, especially if they had no symptoms, that's the only way to tell that they had the virus and recovered. If they developed symptoms and they, we test them for the COVID-19 and we know that they, they have it or not. So, um, but in um, countries that have tested, you know, people across the whole population, not just people that are sick, about 25% to 50% of people that tested um, positive um, had no symptoms. And they were, you know, mostly young people like South Korea, 20 to 29 year olds was the group. You know, they still socialized, they were perfectly fine, they weren't sick at all, but they were carrying the virus. Okay, so that's the first point. Point two is that people that get sick may have no symptoms for up to two weeks. So, you know, they're, they're, they get sick eventually, but it can take up to two weeks. Um, you know, and obviously the asymptomatic people or people with no symptoms have been spreading the virus um, as well. So you don't have to be sick to spread the virus. I think most people are aware of that now. Point three, people travel all around the world. You know, they can spread the virus in a day or two to any, any other location in the world by commercial air travel. You know, so all these people that have no symptoms, you know, how do you detect them? The virus just spreads. Point four is, of course, it's exponential growth rate. You know, if the spreading rate was two, R zero being two, you know, one person would spread it to two, those two people would each spread it to two more and two more and two more. You can see this is very, this is exponential growth and humans just do not understand exponential growth. Um, you know, people thought the R0 was 2.4 for the longest time, but it looks like, you know, a study recently shows that it's 4.7. So it spreads, you know, even much more quickly than, than people originally thought. So China, January 23rd, locked down 70 million people. That's a fact. So if anybody is blaming people, they can only blame them. You know, let, let's have a look, you know, what China actually did. Because after January 23rd, with the action that China took, which went around the world, people sure, certainly should have realized that this could go to any country. And in fact, will go to any country and they'll have to deal with it. How will they deal with it? 
um, you know, different way, in different ways from China. So obviously with the previous five points, the virus will go, you know, basically global around the world. You know, some virologists are saying it may have infect 50 to 70 percent of the global population. I mean, what more did we have to know after January 23rd? So all the blaming, all the finger pointing and stuff, it's just bla it's just blame to try to hide one's country's own um, uh, inability, in, you know, inability to take action uh, when they needed to. So China, the first case was December 1st, 2019. The whole country, well, Wuhan shut down January 23rd, and then the entire region around shut down the next day or a few days after. So the gap between those two dates is seven weeks. That's how long it took China to, to do the shutdown. I think there were about 400 cases. But, you know, some people say, well, the numbers are wrong in China. But, you know, we all know what China did on January 23rd and subsequently to deal with the virus. So if we knew those other Logic 101 points, then we would logically say, well, this thing's coming here. What are we going to do? And it's just a matter of time. We have to bid it. So Canada, the first case was January 27th, and we basically shut down on March 15th. That's seven weeks again. So that's, we didn't sh shorten the time to shut down because of what was going on in China or in Italy in February. You know, it took the same amount of time for us to, to reach the shutdown. The U.S., their first case was about a week before Canada's, January 21st. And they shut down about the same time as we did, but not to you know the same extent. And some states still have not shut down uh, much. And there, there was a huge lack of early testing. I mean, after January 23rd, the world should have scrambled every country for testing, not just testing for you know whether you have the virus, but also testing for antibodies to see, well, you had the virus before, you know, or you have had the you you have the virus, um, but there's no no symptoms. There were no symptoms, so you built up uh, some um, immunity because this thing's gonna. How is this gonna thing gonna end? Well, you know, people are hoping for a vaccine, but you know, natural immunity or herd immunity comes from people being exposed and building up the antibodies. So, you know, people are saying, well, China was full of lies and stuff. And I ask, uh, what would be different now, for example, in Canada, if we had 100% transparency from China in November? Okay, people say that they didn't listen to a, a few Chinese scientists back then who were saying this is a new virus, it's going to be deadly. I mean, who, you know, not listening to scientists, not listening to doctors, you know, do you, do you really think that countries like Canada or the U.S. would have, you know, shut down and re reacted and shut down everything uh, before their own cases uh, started growing exponentially and got out of hand and, and, and caused everybody to react? Why would China listen to a few doctors when their total number of cases was so low? We wouldn't do that either. We wouldn't listen to them. There's so many parallels to climate change. You know, ignore the scientists, ignore the doctor when they have an alarming story, an alarming picture. How could the virus have been, st and people say, well, it, you know, if China had been totally transparent and honest, maybe they could have stopped the virus in China. It wouldn't have even got out to Italy. It wouldn't have gotten anywhere. I've just talked about the basic science of the virus, the logic 101 points, you know, um, and uh, how, do you, how would China have kept it in China? They would have had to basically completely isolate the country. They would have had to stop all flights between China and the rest of the world, you know, with, with uh, you know, not that many cases originally. You know, what country in the world would, would do this? Um, you know, uh, the last significant virus like this was uh, in, in 1918, the so-called Spanish influenza. Okay, no country would have done that on a few cases. So lying, putting blame up to people now is pointless and very counterproductive. We need global cooperation to deal with the pandemic. There'll be lots of time for blame after it's over. Blame now only worsens things. You know, so attacking China, the, the World Health Organization, et cetera, et cetera, you know, is pointless. I mean, China acted more quickly and more successfully than any major Western country so far.